Friends, good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church's online worship service. We're delighted that you have tuned in to worship with us this day. Whether you're a member of our congregation or a visitor from far or near, we hope that you feel the love and the warmth of Jesus Christ here in our midst as we worship the living God together. Friends, just a few announcements to share with you this morning. I remind you that uh, if you are interested and willing to donate blood, we encourage you to come and be a part of our Red Cross blood drive that will be taking place here on Thursday, June the 24th uh, from 2 to 6.30 p.m. If you would like to sign up for a time, you can go to the Red Cross's website and you can sign up there and you can come and participate. Also, speaking of registration, uh, our Vacation Bible School registration is on our website and we encourage families who would like to have their children be a part of this to go online and to sign up for that for Miss Erin so that she can know who to expect. Uh, that will be taking place the week of July the 18th and it will be from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, in the evenings and will hopefully be outside predominantly. And also just a quick reminder, um, if you did not tune in last week, to remind you that uh, plans are being made for us to return to in-person worship starting Sunday, July the 11th. Uh, those plans continue to be in place and we will wait for the session to approve everything here at the end of the month. And once that's approved, we can give a definitive time and, and more clarification on how that will take place. But for now, we encourage you to circle that date on your calendars that you can come and be a part of our first in-person worship service in well over a year. And so we rejoice in that together. Friends, those are all the announcements that I have to share with you at this time. Let us now settle our hearts and minds on the worship of God Almighty. Our responsive call to worship comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 95, verses 1 through 7a. Um, it is found in your bulletin. Read along with me those sections that are in bold. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let us worship God.
gracious God, I come before thee. Come thou also unto me, where we find thee and adore thee. There a heaven on earth must be. To my heart, O oh, unto thou, let it be thy temple now. Speak, O oh, Lord, and Friends, we serve an amazing God who loves us more than we could ever hope for or imagine. A God who enters into our world in Jesus the Christ and who calls us by name and calls us to follow him and to walk in his ways. And as you know, many of us try to do that, but so often we fail uh, miserably at times to follow Christ in the ways in which he calls us. And so together as God's people, we come and we humbly confess, acknowledging our sins before the Lord, knowing that the God that we serve is willing and just and able to forgive us of our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. So friends, I invite you to join us in our prayer of confession this morning that you'll find on your screen or also printed in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Holy God, in your love, you reach out and pursue us with your grace. Even though we know your goodness and your graciousness, we still turn away. So often our hearts remain hardened and we stubbornly refuse to listen to your voice. Lord, forgive our foolish ways. Change our hearts, O God. You are the potter and we are the clay. Mold our hearts to reflect your very own that we may be your witnesses each and every day. For we offer our prayer to you in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Friends, the good news of the gospel is this. While we were yet sinners, it is Christ who died for each and every one of us. And the scriptures affirm and declare that the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Indeed, as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us and remembers them no more. So friends, I urge you to believe the good news of the gospel this day. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. As we have received Christ's grace and peace this day, let us in turn now pass the peace of Christ to one another. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Sunday. What brought my orange Play-Doh with me today? I enjoy playing with Play-Doh. It's soft and flexible and I 
can make it into a lot of things. I like to make balls or snowballs, snowmen. Sometimes I make worms. I seem to always be making worms and bird's nests. And <laughs> I think I can even make it into a heart. It's so soft, so I can push it down flat and make a little dip in the top and a little point at the bottom. And there's my softened heart. Well, also, when I was finding my orange Play-Doh, I found some white Play-Doh, and I had left the, the lid off of it, so it's not soft. It's hard, and I can't make anything out of this white, hard Play-Doh. This reminded me of something in our Bible scripture today. It says in our Old Testament, God's word, the truth, that Pharaoh had a hardened heart. It wasn't soft. It was hardened. Now Moses, he had a softened heart, like our orange Play-Doh. And God was able to use Moses to lead his people, the Israelites, away from Pharaoh and away from slavery. So what causes Pharaoh to have the hardened heart? Well, Pharaoh was selfish. He just thought about himself and he didn't know God. He didn't know the one true living God and he did not choose to follow him. He just chose to do what he wanted to do. Well, how can we keep our hearts from becoming hardened like Pharaoh's heart? Well, one thing is we can know that God is God and we are not. God is so much greater than us. And then we can thank him. We can thank him for our blessings. You know, even in times of sorrow or trouble, we can still find something to be thankful for. The sunshine, comfy beds, ice cream. And when we thank God, when we make that connection to him, we are staying in our place, our place of a softened heart where we're meek and we're pure in spirit. Now, as far as I know, Pharaoh always had a hardened heart and he lost everything. Things didn't turn out well for Pharaoh. And if we have a hardened heart, the same thing will happen to us. So remember Moses and his softened heart and how God could use him. And remember your blessings and thank God for those. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word that shows us how to live. And Lord, help us to see our blessings and always be thankful to you and keep our hearts soft. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life, there's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got change, He's a chain breaker. Search the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life. There's a better life If you've got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom Or saving He's a prison shaking savior If you've got chains He's a chain breaker If 
you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, a prison shaking savior if you've got chains he's a chain breaker if you need freedom or saving he's a prison shaking savior if you've got chains he's a chain breaker Good morning. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Psalms. Before reading from the Bible, we seek the illumination of the Holy Spirit and call upon God to make us receptive to the life-giving word that comes to us through both the reading and the proclamation of scripture. Let us pray. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, our unison reading this morning is from Psalm 95, verses 6 through 11. I invite you to read along with me. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Oh, that today you would listen to His voice. Do not harden your hearts, as at Meribah on the day at Massah in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, They are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore, in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 through 13. Follow along with me as I read the word of God. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers, and the Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and it became a snake. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard, and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stubborn. That's the best word that describes my sweet dog, Bella. Honestly, she's a great dog. We rescued her about three years ago from the Avery County Humane Society, and she came to live with us. She's house trained, she doesn't chew or tear up our furniture, and she's a pretty mild-mannered dog, but she's stubborn as can be. Now, she's a hound mix. We seem to think that she is a walker hound, so she loves to chase squirrels and chipmunks and rabbits all around our yard. She's even been known to dig up the yard and find a few moles uh, and take care of them for us. But did I mention that she's stubborn? You see, you cannot get her to change her mind. If she decides that she's going to do something, she's going to do it whether you tell her no or not. And if you want her to do something, she's not going to do it unless she makes up her own mind to do it. 
For instance, at nighttime, she will jump up onto the bed uh, between Angela and myself, and she decides to lay down with us. But when she does that, she puts all of her weight or leans up right on top of me, sometimes literally on my leg or on my side. And of course, I can't deal with that very well. I'm not going to sleep well when she does that. So if I tell her to move over or I try to get her to move over, she just lays there like dead weight. She acts as if she's deaf and doesn't hear a word that I'm saying. And she knows exactly what I want her to do, but she's too stubborn to move. She will only move if I force her to do so. We once had a bear come into our front yard and she happened to be outside and she was barking and acting crazy. And when I went outside and realized that this huge black bear was there, she was chasing after it. And so I yelled at her and begged her to come over away from the bear and in towards the house. And she didn't listen. She was literally on this bear's heels trying to bite him. So I had to run out near this bear and grab her by the collar and drag her back towards the house. This bear could have killed her with one swipe of his paw. Now, she's a lovable dog, but she's stubborn, absolutely stubborn. Maybe you have a pet like Bella, or maybe you have a spouse like Bella or a child, or maybe, just maybe, you happen to be stubborn too. As we continue our sermon series on Exodus this day, we read that Moses and Aaron have gone back to Pharaoh, even though he had told them previously that he wouldn't let the Israelites leave. Now, God had told them that Pharaoh would ask them to perform a miracle when they met with him. So he instructed them to throw Moses' staff on the ground, and in doing so, it would become a snake. So they showed up to see Pharaoh, and indeed, he asked them to perform a miracle. Now, Pharaoh wanted some sort of proof that their God had really sent them to him. And this was the moment of truth, a moment that would provide credibility that they weren't just trying to trick Pharaoh into letting the Israelites go. So when Pharaoh asked them to perform a miracle, they do just as God had told them to do. And this staff turns into a snake. Well, that's at least what our Bible translations say. You see, the Hebrew word here, tanin, suggests that it was more than a snake, more like a scary sea monster or dragon. And Pharaoh witnesses this, but he doesn't apologize to Moses and Aaron for doubting their story. Instead, he calls his own people, his own wise men, sorcerers and magicians to perform the same act. And so Moses and Aaron are waiting around to see what transpires. And somehow, some way, these magicians are able to do the very same thing. Exodus says, each one threw down his staff and it became a snake. Apparently, there was some serious dark magic going on that allowed them to replicate this wonder. Or maybe, just maybe, God allowed it to happen in order to prove his point. The truth is, we really don't know. But what we do know is that something remarkable took place. What appeared to be a stalemate was nothing of the sort. It says, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Aaron's snake or sea monster or dragon, whatever it was, proved to be the alpha by swallowing up the other creatures. Surely Pharaoh would see this and, and recognize that Israel's God was trying to get his attention, right? But he doesn't. Scripture says, Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard, and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Pharaoh was stubborn. The Hebrew word for hard can mean stubborn, firm, or intensely harsh. Pharaoh's heart had become stubborn to the point that he refused to listen to them. I can only imagine that witnessing Aaron's staff and his creature devouring these others inflamed his heart even more against them. Yet Pharaoh has absolutely no clue that this standoff would foreshadow his own army being swallowed up by the Red Sea. Like my dog Bella, who refuses to listen to me, Pharaoh refuses to listen to anything that Moses or Aaron have to say. But he can't deny what he's witnessed, but he doesn't have to believe it or even submit to it. In his eyes, he's the king, and he'll call the shots, not these peasants. 
If his sorcerers can conjure up the same wonders, then why should he listen to Moses in the first place? Pharaoh will not be moved, and his heart will become more calloused and stubborn as God displays his power time and time again. In fact, his hardened heart will be his kingdom's downfall as God delivers on his promise to Israel. The Exodus will not only prove to Pharaoh who the Lord is, but it will also be known to the surrounding nations too. Unfortunately, though, Pharaoh's condition is contagious. Like a virus that's easily transmissible, we know a lot about that. So, too, is hard-heartedness. Once the exodus has taken place, the Israelites will succumb to this disease. After witnessing God's mighty hand displayed in ten plagues and ultimately imparting the Red Sea and leading them safely across to the other side, they, too, will refuse to listen to God. As Moses meets with God on Mount Sinai, Aaron and the Israelites, impatience will grow and lead them to form a golden calf to worship. Time and again, they will question Moses' leadership and God's care for them. They will complain when there's nothing to eat. They'll refuse to listen to God's instruction, even when he provides for them. And their hearts will become hardened, stubborn, and self-centered. Psalm 95 verses 7 and 11 declares, Today, if you would only hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the wilderness where your ancestors tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared an oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. The psalmist acknowledges the stubbornness of the redeemed people of Israel, the ones who witnessed God's mighty miracles and still refused to listen to him. Their stubbornness kept them from entering into the promised land. In fact, only Caleb and Joshua were the ones from that generation that were able to enter in. And so the psalmist calls Israel to learn from their past mistakes and to listen to God and not to harden their hearts. But the truth is, is that all of us can easily become hard-hearted too. We've experienced our own exodus, being delivered from death to life through Jesus Christ. We've experienced God's miracles in our own lives too. Now we've not seen staffs turned into snakes, but we've seen physical illnesses healed. We've seen God provide for our needs when we weren't sure if things would work out. We, we've seen God provide new job opportunities for us. We've seen God answer our many cries for help and for deliverance. And even though we've witnessed these things, even though we've offered praise to God for his faithfulness and for his miraculous works, we still allow our hearts to become hardened. Too easily we forget what God has done and is doing in our lives. And we start to moan and complain. We grumble that we do not have enough, even though many around the world have hardly anything. We complain that our freedoms are being taken away from us when we're forced to wear masks, even though so many others around the world can't even leave their homes or are forced to do things that really take away their freedom. We choose not to be involved in worship and complain that the service is too long or isn't entertaining enough or that we have better things to do, even though many Christians around the world have to meet secretly to worship at the risk of their own lives. You see, our lips declare that we love God, but we still refuse to walk in his ways we withhold forgiveness, we remain judgmental, and we pick and choose what we want to do in God's word rather than obediently following every word that God gives us. As Jesus quotes from the prophet Isaiah, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. We become stubborn, hard-hearted. God's miracles don't change our minds or our ways because we're never satisfied with where we are. Our hearts easily go astray, and just like the Israelites, we find ourselves bowing down to idols that we have formed with our own hands. We're stubborn, stiff-necked, and hard-hearted people who need to repent of our foolish ways. 
As the psalmist begs Israel, so God begs us today. If you would only hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The truth is, is that we've got heart problems. If our greatest treasure is found in anything other than the Lord of heaven and earth, our creator, our sustainer, and our redeemer, then our hearts will be led astray. You see, God has made himself known to us. We've read his living word that shows us his faithfulness throughout all of history. And we've experienced the love and grace of the living word, Jesus the Christ, who has shown us what sacrificial and unconditional love truly is. We've experienced God's miracles and we know that he is real. We believe that he's the way and the truth and the life. But you see, it's not just enough to believe it. We must also do something about it by offering him our undivided hearts. James urges us saying, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and flee from him. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You see, the good news of the gospel is that God is more stubborn than we are. Yet his stubbornness is for our good. Our stubbornness leads us away from God, and yet God's stubbornness leads him directly to us. You see, he refuses to leave us with hardened hearts. And in Jesus, he has come to melt our hearts of stone. But let me tell you this. God will not force himself upon us, nor make us believe or trust in him. Instead, God chooses to love us in his freedom, crossing every barrier so that we can know him, hear him, and even see him. But at the end of the day, it is up to us to submit to God. Pharaoh chose not to do so, and he experienced the mighty hand of God upon him. Many of the Israelites continued to have stubborn hearts, and they missed out on entering into the promised land. And today we come before God with the same choices to submit and allow God to mold and shape our hearts into a heart like his own or to ignore God's voice and attempts to get our attention. You see, friends, my prayer is that we would humbly submit our hearts to the Lord who's done everything in his power to show us his love and his faithfulness and his unwavering grace. Let us turn away from our stubbornness and allow God to melt our hearts of stone. May our prayer be the same as King David who cried out to God in Psalm 51 verse 10, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So friends, may we allow God to perform another miracle, to swallow up our hard hearts and to exchange it with pure and undivided hearts for him. That choice is ours and God stands ready to act and to answer that prayer if we truly want it. Friends, may we choose that. May we seek the Lord. May we allow God to change our hearts into hearts that are more like his. May it be so this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together as one body and affirm our faith by speaking the Decalogue. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth or in the waters below. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers of the people. Great and faithful God, we bring you our prayers this day, spoken 
and those which silently remain in our hearts. We pray for wisdom that our faith in you may continue to flourish, even amidst the suffering and the division and the uncertainties of our world. As we stumble through these days, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of compassion, protect and comfort your people as we are suffering from the myriad of disasters and illnesses and injustices across the globe, from personal crisis to civil unrest to worldwide strife. Be with those who are in distress. Strengthen us in faith, O Lord, that we may experience your healing presence. God of boundless guidance, equip and empower your people as we collectively wander aimlessly, looking for leadership from our mortal peers instead of our Savior. Reinforce our faith in you that we may be your example for others, that we may humbly serve instead of pretentiously being served, that in our actions others see you more clearly. God of creation, we pray for your presence here and now on our fragile planet. Restore among us a love of this earth you created for our home. Help us put an end to ravishing its land, air, and waters, and give us respect for all your creatures. Bless our direction, O Lord, and illuminate our paths with your light, such that we follow your guidance and not our own insights. God of provision, instill in us an everlasting faith, embodied with a love for you and a love for our neighbor. Instill in us a limitless faith, overflowing with grace, bursting with forgiveness, and abounding in gratitude. Bless us that we may live our lives to your glory in awe of your gift to us for our very salvation. With humble appreciation, we offer our prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us all to pray as we pray now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You are holy, you are whole, you are always evermore than we ever understand. You are always at hand. Blessed are you coming near. Blessed are you coming here to your church in wine and bread, raised from soil, raised from dead. You pray together. Lord God, we thank you for these gifts that we can give back to you. These tithes, these offerings that you can give toward your mission and your kingdom and that your gospel might go forth in word and in deed. We pray, Lord God, that you would use it beyond anything we can imagine, not only in our community, but in communities around the world. 
So we lift you up, beloved. We thank you for this opportunity by which we can give back to one who's given us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, today I charge you not to harden your hearts, but to allow God to soften and mold and shape your heart into a heart like his own, that together we might trust God with all of our heart, that he might be our greatest treasure, and that we might acknowledge that within our hearts, that acknowledges that within our lives and the ways in which we live. And so that is my prayer for all of us, that we would listen to his voice and not just listen to it, but act on it. And as we do so, May we feel the comfort and the peace and the grace and the love of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may your Creator, and may your Redeemer, and may your Sustainer be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.